So now, what we might do is have a look at some of this logic here. So these little arrows actually add brackets around filters. So if I press an arrow, we're actually adding a bracket between these top two filters. If we press the next one, we're including the next filter in that, and so on. So what we could do is put all of these filters together and then leave booking status elsewhere. And we might change the logic between them to be or. And the way this works is what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, so show me where the camps are, say, Asia, if these depicts Asia, and the camp country is Japan, and the camp name is something, I'm not sure what, and the invoice date is last year. So show me all the camps that match those selections, or show me where camps are active. So you're effectively going to list, get a list of all active camps and camps that match this selection. Uh, you could change this back to and, and we could remove some of these brackets. So these brackets and, uh, and ors are used for far more complex uh, filters than we're really going to look in too much today. Uh, so we'll leave it there and we'll close our filter setup and the next thing we're going to do is go to the output step but before we do I'm just going to add in demographic. So if I go to the output step now we're going to see our filters and what you'll notice is some of the filters have values and some don't. The reason behind that is our org ref code fields automatically have values because of course we've written them in. That's part of how the org ref codes work. So remember our camp country was that two country letter code and we mapped it to the full country name. We're suddenly getting those full country names here and we're doing the same with demographic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cache the filters. So for camp region we're going to go to format, we're going to go to entry style and we can cache it but alternatively a really easy way to do it is entry style and list and Yellowfin automatically caches that for us. So we can do the same for camp country but we probably want to go into format because at the moment if I go into entry style, which is the way the user selects a value, we're currently using our reference codes list and I actually want to cache my values. So I'm going to cache those and refresh and close. Now remember before I was talking about dependent hierarchies, so dependent filters. So if I click Asia, for example, I would want all the countries to correspond to my selection. But at the moment, they don't. So what I'm going to do is set up that dependency. So the first thing I need to do is cache my parent filter or my top highest filter, which is what I've done. And then I go to the next one down. And what I do is I go link to parent. And the parent is region. Now from here I can say yes I want dependent values which means when you select a particular region or multiple regions we see the countries within those regions and I can also say dependent display which means I only see the country list if the region list has the selection. I'm going to turn that off because sometimes I might want to just jump straight to the country. So we'll submit that and now I'm going to add another layer and associate camp name with country. So I'm going to link to parent. I'm going to link that back to country. And this one I might actually make dependent display because we don't want to see all of the camp names. That's a very long list. All right. So the way this works is I pick, say, Asia. And now my list of countries has been drastically reduced. I could change that to Europe. And again, I've got a different list of countries, Latin America. And then once I pick a particular country, 
I'll see the camps associated with that country. And so on. So it's really very easy to set up. So from here, I might want to set up my date filter. And what I can do with that is change my entry style. And I might actually make that a drop down. But the problem with this is it's not using my predefined date ranges. So what I'll do is I'll go to format and in my entry style, I'm going to change that to predefined. And now I'm going to close that menu and we're going to get these date ranges here that I can select from. And last, we're going to use this demographic. So once I select some of my filters and hit go, I can close this panel and if I open my demographic you'll see I've got my values here but it's not using my icons. So what I want to do is I'll use those again. I'll go into my format, I go to my demographic and in this top section here we have a display style and I'm just going to enable images as well as text. So now, if I select my demographic values, you'll see I've got my little icons there. Okay, so the last thing we're going to have a look at is using linked filters and to do that I'm actually going to delete this report and start again because I've made a mess. <laughs> so we're going to delete that report. I'm going to create a new report and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in my date, and my payment information. I'll sum that up, that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is allow the user to select a date range and it's going to show me data within that particular date range and the matching date range the year before. So I'm going to go to advanced settings, I'm going to set it to be between which is fine and then I'm going to set the second filter to actually be what we call link to or link to filter. And we're going to define that link and say, look, I want to use between, which is the same operator, but I actually want to link it to this invoice date filter that we have there. And what I'm going to do is subtract one year and submit that. And what I'm also going to do is change my uh, logic to be or, which basically means that the user will pick a date range here and it, then I will see data between that date range or this date range, so the one before, the year before. So now when I go to my output, if I select, say, April 2009, so we'll go... Mm, 2009, April the 1st to the 30th, and submit that. What we're actually seeing now is uh, data in that month. Now, if I try for a different range, maybe we'll change it to um, few months so that we can see. So what we're actually seeing now is a range of data and if we looked at the SQL now, which I won't do, uh, you'll see you'll have two different sets of filters and they're linked together. Okay, so that's the filtering for this session.